the inside is just awesome looking. It's got the perfect amount of just like this 90s funk, but it's the cool kind of 90s funk, not like the weird Floridian grandma pink vomit stuff like a lot of the older Prevos have. Goodbye, old Dooley. We had some good times. We only had one bad time, but it ended up being a good time. I may not have stayed in Oklahoma if it weren't for this thing. It wouldn't let me leave. Checking to make sure I didn't leave anything in there. I think we're good. I said, you think this is gonna be too high? It doesn't drop down at all. So we're not gonna try to attempt to get out of his driveway with the trailer attached to the bus. So he's gonna hook up to my old trailer one last time. We're gonna drop it in the road and then do the swap out there. It's done deal, everything's signed and all that. We just hooked up uh, my truck and trailer. He's got my dually over there and I'm about to pilot this thing solo for the very first time. Um, I've driven these a couple times, but with somebody else with me, so this will be a little different. Uh, learning experience for sure. I pretty much just gotta get out there, hang a left, and that takes me right to I-20. Onward we go. And stopping just to fill it up the rest of the way. Make sure everything is good. My truck is still there. That's a plus. Fill up is, I believe, this one. Yep. And it needs uh, some hydraulics in there, but that's the fuel tank. There's, a, there's an opening on both sides, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna run in, get some food, get back on the road. Well, I'm all fueled up. I just ate. I actually sat over there to eat. You shouldn't eat and drive anyway with something this huge. There's a lot more responsibility. But I pulled out here so you can better get a better look at it from a distance. Now, this paint job looks like this because this was originally Al Unser Jr's and every one of these is configured individually by the purchaser. They're built to order. So he picked out this paint job, everything in the interior, that was all Al. I don't know if he was married at the time, if his wife had any input. I would assume probably not because it looks like a dude picked everything. But man, I really, normally the Escalade will be back there, but how freaking sick would it be if my truck was silver? And it had a little black thing kind of running down the bedside a little bit, extending from the taillight. 60 series making some noise for series 60 for you uh, particulars out there. Big muffler. That's gonna be gone. It's so far back there you can barely hear it anyway. Like you hear nothing driving it. It's just like road noise basically. It drives great for a 95, or 96, built 95. Ugh. So, out here at uh, this little regional airport near Memphis, boy Adrian Berryhill, him and his dad got a little hangar spot over there. There's plenty of parking. So I can come back in here, set up shop, and don't gotta worry about anybody mess with my stuff. I drove something like 670 miles today. Uh, I'm getting used to this thing now. First 100 miles or so were real like checking my mirrors every two seconds. It was getting better. And I actually had a really crazy thing happen. It was originally Al Unser Jr's. And I had heard it was Robbie Gordon's, but I hadn't validated it yet. So I call Robbie Gordon Motorsports. Uh, assistant lady picks up I said, I got a random question. She's like, well, I got a random answer. What's up? I was like, I just bought this motorhome. And I heard, I was told that Robbie used to own it. But I haven't been able to validate it. I know that Al Unser Jr. is the original owner. That's for sure. But I don't know if it's Robbie. So I thought you might know. She's like, oh, well, what it look like? I'm like, well, it was black and silver with this, like, racing with the checkered flag thing kind of down the side. And she was like, oh, I've never seen it before. Hold on a minute. So she goes, and I'm on hold for like four minutes. And I'm kind of like, what the heck is going on? Either like, 
I don't know. And then like four minutes later, she comes back and she's like, you still there? I'm like, yeah. She's like, she's like, I got Robbie here. He's got some stories for you. And I'm like, oh, sick. So I'm talking to Robbie Gordon on the phone. And this was his bus. The paint job is not original. Uh, when he bought it from Unser, it was like white and had like some orange and purple in there. And said, he said he had this all sent it off, had it all stripped down to bare aluminum and repainted the way you see it now. And he said he drove this thing all over the place. Like this was like his rig. It wasn't like a, it wasn't like a driver drove it around. And he just stayed in the tracks. Like this was Robbie's deal. And he said that he also had a boat that matched it and he would uh, try to find some pictures and send them to me, which would be freaking awesome. There's a lot more that he told me about this, but I don't wanna ruin that. We'll have to save that for a future video because uh, next time I'm in North Carolina, I'm gonna go over there and meet up with him and he's gonna tell me all about it, which is freaking cool. So I can't wait to uncover some more history on this thing. And even during the, the Unser days, I don't know anything about that, but Maybe we'll find out. I let you think that little tidbit was cool. I can't wait to see where that goes. Robbie seemed like a super awesome dude over the phone and he was pretty pumped to hear that his old motorhome was back out running around. He said he didn't know where it went. And the next owner was actually pretty interesting too, who he sold it to, but you're gonna have to wait to see that one. Now there's all kinds of room in here and nobody's around to like wake up or anything, so. I'm gonna take the opportunity to uh, practice backing up with the trailer and just, you know, getting used to maneuvering this thing in tight places just so like, I can figure out what I can and can't do with it. Now we're out here the next morning at Boogity Boogie Custom Automotive where uh, Adrian works. Let's see if we can find him. I found him, he's in there wearing headphones. He doesn't know I'm here. Dang. What's up? This thing looks nice. Oh, my Gordon, Cody. I don't have a pit viper, so I need to go get the stick right out here, Frazier. Hey, what's the password? <laughs> 16 on titties. Double password, you're allowed it. <laughs> Bro! Kinda gotta close that hard. Honestly, I would be afraid to turn on a UV light in here. Maybe, but it's only gonna get worse, so. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Is that freaking crunched up carbon fiber? What do they call that stuff? You know what? It kind of does it look like that. It looks just like it. It looks like that forged That's carbon. Such, yeah, forged carbon. But this was, put on the new this was built in 1995, so I don't think that's actually forged carbon, but I think... I mean, that, we're going to say it's forged carbon. Yeah, no one was ahead of their time. Yeah, dude. This is the kind of house I take my shoes off in. Dude! Dude! Still haven't gotten situated. This isn't the... I like that. That doesn't even work anymore. Does it really need to? No, he, re he replaced it with like a different one, but <laughs> Dude. you feel like a bus driver? Yeah. Wait, check this out. It's got this like interesting horn thing. Apparently there's an empty water bottle in there. This is all just remnants, whatever this guy left in here. It'll go out here and honk stuff. I don't know how, uh, how exactly you work it, but it's got like a million songs in here. Oh, I see. So it's got the little thingy. What song you want to hear? Cotton Eye Joe, how about that? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I'm just trying to, you know, help you out here. I mean, you really can't drive this with one knee, dude. No, you can't. But here's the thing. If you get an iPhone, Matt, you have a TV right there. Why do you need to hold your phone when you have a TV? Like, good point. You act like this is a big problem. <laughs> I cruise control over here. It's all like freaking old school Jake brake, all that stuff. It's far out. How did 
you get in here without pit vipers on is what I want to know. I don't know. Yeah, what's the password? 76 trombones. Should be 69 trombones. <laughs> <laughs> it smells good. Yeah. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> Something you can't get on video is the aroma. I don't know if this is original to Unser or if Robbie Gordon did this. I forgot to ask him yesterday. Yeah. But zebra on the headboard is pretty suggestive. Hey, yeah. With the mirror above it, like, come on. <laughs> Fluff it up, dude. <laughs> That's it right there, dude. Look in the mirror. I took mine off because I couldn't see anything. It's too dark in here. <laughs> it's never too dark. So I've been in this thing for a few days now. Uh, all over the place. So the last you saw I was in Memphis with Adrian while I went to OKC, got my transmission, head down to Dallas where I'm at now at Triple Seven, and we did SCT in Dallas. So camped the track for a bit, now I'm back here. Everything's been going pretty well. This thing definitely has some issues I need to work out, which were to be expected. I mean, it's as old as I am. But like the little skylight thingy up there, um, it, they both dribble, the front one and the back one. And that wall in the back in the bathroom that I had uh, gone over in an inspection video which will be followed later um, it's leaking I got a bunch of stuff to do all kinds of cool things to point out I want to make another video shortly after this one go check it out where I'll go over the specifics of all the stuff on the outside all the stuff I need to do general overview all that this video was just to kind of show you me getting my feet wet and my first experiences actually using the thing. So hit that subscribe button and check out the other ones.